second Pokemon, fans. Welcome back, friends. Lost Guy here, and it's time for another vlog here. And, okay, so a couple things. Channel stuff, uh, the, what the opener is about, and then we'll talk about politics a little bit at the end. I think the order it should be is uh, what will make people leave the, the vlog the least to what they will likely leave, because politics is usually the killer. Now, I can talk about that at the end. It's fine. It's fine. So, first thing I want to talk about is what's going on with Scarf. And that is, I finally realized what I can do with this freaking hair. Because obviously, we're not going to be able to cosplay this here because the virus is still here. I can donate this to Locks of Love. So, I think it's not a bad idea. My hair grows fast. So, it's not a bad idea to just uh, cut it at one point, let it grow out, and then only cut it when I can donate it. It grows fast, so I know I can do that. And it's a nice thing to do. Like, I think it'd be a nice thing to do is to do that. So, that's what I plan to do with this hair. Unless work says my hair is too long and they force me to cut it. I don't know if that's a thing they can do, but they might. I don't know. It's Work can be weird. My bosses are all bald, so... <laughs> I don't know. They might just do it out of spite, and then there you go. Um, Channel stuff. So, I'm playing Bravely Default 2, and I have not decided whether it be main channel or side channel yet. I want to get a couple more hours into the game. Right now, we're dealing with the Hitman 3 LP anyway, so it would be a while before Barely Fault 2 comes out anyway. Thing is, we work ahead of time because both me and Jinx have jobs. So, Hitman came out, like, a month ago, and we're finally getting the LP out now, and so Barely Fault would be the same thing. So, we don't exactly catch the hype wave. It's just, if you want to see our, us go through it, you can. That's really what it is. Because we're not chasing to be uh, out on release day. There are people who do that, and... That's good for them, but we're not able to do that. So, it'll either be Bradley Default 2 or the next Layton. The next Layton will eventually happen as an LP, but we're just debating whether or not Deep Bradley Default 2 will be an LP right now. That's that's really it. By the way, Bradley Default 2 is the third game in the Default, uh, in the Bravely series. I, I just can't stop bringing that up. Okay, so let's talk about Pokemon. So, there are two... I feel, like some people say others, but I feel there are actually only two fandoms. You could give them all the wealth of heaven. Yeah, I saw that meme. And they would not be satisfied. I disagree on the other one. And that is... Smash, and you know I'm right, and Pokemon. I, we all love Smash, we all love Pokemon, but the truth of the matter is these communities do not shut up about how much they want more stuff. And, uh, to an extent, Animal Crossing, but I don't think they're as bad. Like, Animal Crossing's the third in that meme. And sometimes Animal Crossing people are like, geez, you guys are asking for a lot here. You're already getting plenty, but... Uh, I also get it, because if you're a fan of Sims uh, 3, and then how bad 4 butchered it, I get it. I get it. People who like to build things, they like having a lot of things, and it's unfortunate it's not as much, but... I don't know, I think Animal Crossing is on the edge of that. Well, Smash people, never satisfied. They're never satisfied. Pokemon people, never satisfied. Let's get back to the Direct. I talked about this last week, I think. Direct happens, a lot of fandoms get things they want, and I'm happy for them. It helps that I'm a fan of a lot of things. It really helps that. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is, it's how much money do you have. Part of it is how much money do you have, and what fandoms actually grab you. I think that's really it. So, me... I have over a thousand games on Steam. Maybe we're at 14 or 1500 now. I forget. But I have a lot of games. I play a lot of games. Games are my life. I have a lot of games. And I've spent a lot of money on games. And I've, blessed, I've been blessed with the ability to have money for that. Working jobs, this and that. Doing whatever it takes to get the money for that. It's also because I don't do anything else. All my money goes out. I don't have any other hobbies that take money away from being able to buy games, besides, of course, buying a bajillion Kirby plushies. I can't ignore that, of course. I've been blessed with being able to work and get money for all these things. Not everyone can do that. There, there are kids who are just, they can only afford one or two games a year. Pokemon's not a bad pick for that. I'd say Monster Hunter's another pick for that, but... Um, and there are people who've just been poor their whole life. They can only afford one or two games every year. There are, these, there are people who can only afford so much. So they can only be a fan of, like, one or two uh, series. And I get that. And I feel sorry for those who are in the ones that aren't getting much love. Like, there are people who absolutely love Metroid. They're not getting anything. Things like that. 
But Pokemon consistently will give you one or two, maybe even three things a year to enjoy. Kirby gives you one thing a year. You get one Kirby thing a year. Mario, you get maybe one to two a year. Like You don't have to worry about Mario. But the Mario community is never noisy. They get plenty of stuff, because of course they do. Zelda people can sometimes be a bit uppity, but um, they've been trying to make sure that there's at least one Zelda a year now, so that's nice for them. And Splatoon, they only have the three games, and they've never really been too noisy, I feel. But Pokemon gets so much stuff, and people are still so noisy and so annoying about it. And Smash as well. We, it's an embarrassment of riches what Smash has, and yet people will keep complaining. And I'm just happy for people. Like, Pyramithra? Never played them. But I'm happy for the fans of that. Because I got plenty of things I'm a fan of that are in there already. Since I like a lot of main Nintendo, I got a lot, of, a lot in there. I would love Bandana D to be in here. I'd love a fourth character for Smash, so that you can have four Kirby characters fighting each other. That would be really cool, I'd love that. But I don't need that. I would love it, but I don't need it. I will forever want Bandana D, but I don't need it, because I already got three others in here. Do I feel like Fire Emblem's overrepresented? Yeah, sure. I'm a big fan of Fire Emblem, though, so I'm still happy. I think it's overrepresented, but I'm still happy to have Krom, to have Lucina, to have Marth, to have Roy, to have uh, Ike, to have Corrin, although I don't really, I never played their game, but sure, it's cool to have Corrin. Byleth, I like Byleth, after all. Um... I named them all, right? Is there another one? No, there's none. That's all. That's everyone. And I would like Lucia. I mean, not Lucia. I would... <laughs> she's a different character. I would like Lynn. I would love Lynn to be in this thing. But I don't want her over a bunch of other characters right now. I'd love if other fandoms got people in here. I, it'd be nice if Sonic got someone else in there, too. It'd be cool. I don't really expect anyone else for Metal Gear Solid. I think Snake's all you need. Sure, you can go Gray Fox, why not? Or, I don't think Ocelot... Ocelot could have been... Well, Gray Fox is an assist, right? Ocelot would be an interesting assist as well. Not a lot of characters I feel for Metal Gear. Like, maybe Raiden? But you... Like, if you, you'd have to be Cyborg Raiden, too, and he'd be ridiculous as balls, but it'd be interesting to have Raiden. Um, I personally want Doom Guy. I think they, Doom Guy could be funny. He just doesn't get to rip and tear, that's all. But he could still do some fun violence in this game. But, um, I feel like Smash, it's, there's so much good in there, and we're never going to see Sora. It would take an amazing deal with with uh, Disney to do that. Uh, we don't need Gino in there. Like, I like Gino, but we don't need him in there. It'd be really cool if he was in there. It'd be, it'd be cool, but I don't know. Everyone's got the nostalgia. So, back to Pokemon. And, yeah, it's just like, everyone's got those things they like, and then they'd like to see them represented in here and that. Okay, sure, yeah. Pokemon. You get shit every year. Every year you're getting stuff. You get mobile games, you get a bajillion plushies, you get Switch stuff, you get all the good things. All the time. You get some way to get a game every time. And you're never satisfied. It just... Mm, I don't get it. I don't... So the Direct happens, and the Pokemon people were upset because there was nothing in the Direct. They're like, we're not going to get anything. Pokemon Snap's coming out in April. Pokemon Snap is coming. It's going to come. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy just having Snap for the year. I'm like, all right. And then in comes two more announcements. I think one this year and the other one will be next year. But the other announcement, which is DP. If you're into DP, there you go. Uh, was it Brilliant Diamond and Polished Pearl? That's probably not what they're called. Um, is it Brilliant Pearl and something Diamond? I forget what they're called now. I forget what they're called right now. It's something diamond, something pearl. Just like, you know, was it heart? Uh, I forget what gold and silver were called when they remade, when they redid those. I forget what they're called. Forget it. Forget it. Um, they're getting, it's getting a remake. DP is getting a remake. Diamond and Pearl's getting a remake. And it's chibiized. And I think it's cute. Some people don't like it. And people are upset. I just, what do you want? Because before it was happening, people were like, we would really like a remake. We'd like it to be faithful to the original, and that'd be really cool. People, I don't know how they got in their heads, they're like, we don't want Sword and Shield remake. I'm like, you're not going to get a Sword and Shield remake. That's too much work. You're not going to get that. You're going to get something that's going to look faithful, because they know people love that. The fact they think freaking Game Freak doesn't care about their fans is insane to me. I don't know how they don't think that. You know how much money they make off you every year? They care about you because they want to make a lot of money off of you. Come on now. 
this JBI's version looks cute. And people were like, why doesn't... They could have made it look like Link's Awakening. Just, you can't... You bitch too much. You bitch too much. God. They bitch too much. I'm happy with what it looks like. Now, I've never played it, so I, of course I'm not going to care as much. And that right there can make some people shut off to what I'm saying. And that's fine. Because Sword and Shield was great, you can go F yourselves. <laughs> look, you're getting a remake. It looks cute. It looks fun. I might actually pick it up and play it. I don't know where it got in people's heads that Sword and Shield was going to be the remake. Like, they were going to remake it to look like Sword and Shield. That's a lot of work. And I think they even have their own sense of like, no, you don't remake this game into the 3D style. You, you you redo it the way it is, top down, but do some things to make it like fresh and new. And that's what they did, the chibiized version, like right? that. Same thing with Link's Awakening. Like, we're going to still do this, but let's do a different color palette and everything, like a new style to it, and that was really cool. They're not going to just straight up do, hey, here's Game Boy again, right here, there you go. No, they're, they're going to do something with it. And here's what they did. It's like when they remade freaking original Pokemon with Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Like, it was that game, but they did some other things with it visually and a little bit of changes to gameplay. Pokemon Arceus. I think people are, are being a little more receptive to it, and that's good. But people are still complaining. They're still complaining. They're, they, they have to find something to complain about, and I'm just, come on... Uh, either they're complaining about the starters, like, I don't, not a big fan of these three starters. I like Rallet, but I don't like any of his evolutions, and so on and so forth. But I'm like, alright, well, these are the starters, so anyone who's fans of these, happy for them. I'll see what I decide at the end of the day. But the, people were just complaining about, about the starters. People were complaining about the look, or the graphics, or like, it's too much like Breath of the Wild, or just making fun of the fact it looks like Breath of the Wild. Like, Breath of the Wild's not the first open world game, but it's done a great job with it. So it's not bad to emulate that, or to imitate that. And I'm sure, like, look at Genshin Impact. It's obviously very much based on Breath of the Wild, and it's doing very well. So Pokemon doing that, not a bad thing, and it's not like it's not something people haven't wanted forever anyway. People have wanted the ability to just fight Pokemon in the field openly. They've wanted that forever. I wanted when I was in high school. When was high school? 20 years ago. 20 years ago we wanted this crap. Come on. That was five years after Pokemon came out. We already wanted something like that five years after Pokemon came out. We wanted the concept to be able to just fight Pokemon in the field. That's been an idea forever. And we're finally getting it. So that's pretty cool to me. There's just so much Pokemon to enjoy, and just people keep complaining, and I'm just, come on. Come on! I go back to Sword and Shield, I look at it, and I'm just like, this was a really good game. This was really fun. I enjoyed the story a lot. It was a fun sports story. I don't know what the people are complaining about with the graphics. The trees don't matter. Are you kidding me? That's not the most important part of this game. The Pokemon need to look good, they need to look fun, and they were. The gameplay had to be fun, and it was. Giga Maxing was, was fun. The story was enjoyable. I loved the music. And when you, when you Gigamax in the stadium, and then the stands are freaking out, it's just so good. They did an amazing job with their presentation. They did a very good job with this game, and just people just had to nitpick and nitpick and nitpick and nitpick and nitpick. I feel like people don't have joy anymore when I look at the Pokemon community. There's no joy there. There isn't joy there. There's only misery and looking to be miserable, and that's why I just don't partake in the Pokemon community. Same thing with the Smash community. There's just misery there. It's angry misery. And it's just not fun to engage whatsoever. Nintendo has a lot of fandoms, and depending on which part of it you're in, it is either very nice, or it is not fun at all, and I don't understand why anyone's there in the first place, besides to be miserable and hateful. That's what it really feels like sometimes. For Kirby fans... I don't think we have to worry. I think we're gonna we're gonna get something at the end of the year probably, or they'll wait until next year for the 30th anniversary. That's what I think is gonna happen. Because that's that's how it could be. Depending on how the virus has impacted things. They got Super Kirby Clash. Uh, not Kirby. Um Kirby Fighters 2 out. It wasn't as good as it could have been because I'm sure there were just pressures, like the pandemic and everything. And so maybe that's affecting whatever the next thing is, and perhaps that'll get held for another year while 30th, 30th anniversary comes out. Or maybe they'll do two games next year. Who knows? 
I think something might come this year, but I wouldn't be surprised if nothing comes out this year and we get we just get the 30th next year, and I'm fine with that. I'm a patient person, and thankfully a lot of the Kirby community is patient, and they'll feel sad, but then they'll just go back to waiting, which I appreciate about the Kirby community. They're very, they're very patient and very supportive people. I really like that about the Kirby community, and I hope that's always how it will be. I'll, and I, yeah, I just hope that's how it'll always be. So the last section of this whole thing is talking about only 9%. That is what is being said this morning about what is happening with the, the COVID relief bill. A crap ton of the GOP right now is saying, in unison, that only 9% of a $1.9 trillion bill is going to COVID-19 relief, health relief. And that is if you have a very narrow definition of what is COVID-19 relief. And that's the problem. The problem is Republicans are saying not the, not the truth. And this is something that I'm getting really tired of, and it's been this my entire life, and that is just purposely not wording things correctly. Purposely ignoring things to make your argument better. And in the world of politics, I wish truth was more important. I wish not bending things was more important. I wish really doing the right thing was more important, but that is not the world we live in. I like to be an optimistic person, but the cynical world is just bending it over and railing it really hard every time I look at politics. And let's, let's talk about the politics really quick. Um, probably lost some of you already, but... What do they mean by there's only 9% being used? And that is because they are ignoring so many things. They're ignoring what else is in there. They're saying these things don't count. They're saying $350 billion is going to state bailout. Who are the front lines when it comes to the virus? That is your state and local governments. They had to deal with the virus everywhere. Happening. It was happening in every state, of course, every city, everywhere it's happening. They had to move their budget to help with that. Budget from infrastructure, budget from schools, budget from all these things, going over to dealing with the virus. That's what happened. And where's the money at now? Well, they don't have as much money now, obviously, because they had to move it over to that. This is a new expense. This is an emergency expense. Think about your bank account. You have the money you spend for, like, rent and all these things, and Dealing with just things you might have to replace on occasion. But you don't have money for a car accident, or maybe you do. You have like $2,000 for like a car accident. That $2,000 is now gone, and now you might be screwed if anything else happened. Or you still needed that $2,000 for other things. That's what's happening to the states. That's what's happening to local government. They had to do expenses that did, they did, weren't supposed to be there. And so they need money to help them out. That's what's in the COVID relief, because that is COVID-related. Relief for them having to spend all this money on the, on the virus, and now they can get money to help them out so they can build on infrastructure and other things like they were supposed to, and also put more money into dealing with the virus. COVID relief isn't just making more vaccine, isn't just distributing more vaccine, isn't just about the vaccine, and isn't just about prevention, it's about dealing with the fallout. It's about dealing with the fact one point was it three, five million people are out of work that want to work. This is thing to keep in mind. Unemployment is people who want to work that aren't working. Well, 1.5. I'll say that. Is 1.3 or 1.5? I'll go with 1.5. It's the bigger number. I'll go with that for now. Could be wrong. Maybe 1.3. Let's go with the smaller number. 1.3. It's still a bunch of people. And so part of the COVID relief is going to unemployment insurance. It's going to the stimulus checks. It's going to trying to reopen schools. It's going to small businesses. These are the things that are not being counted. And that's the thing. They are bending the truth by ignoring specific things, by saying they're not COVID relief. Well, of course they're COVID relief. Things are related. Things are connected. And this is what gets frustrating, is... This is the approaches. This is the approaches here. And it really feels like... And it's generalizing a little bit. It really feels like the, G the GOP really prefers to deal with symptoms than the disease itself. 
while the left is trying to deal with everything, deal with the symptoms and the diseases. I was trying to deal with everything around it. And because it's so spread out, it just looks like waste. But the problem is, is when you only deal with the symptoms, you don't deal with the disease, you're not really helping either. You're just mitigating. You're not dealing with the problem. And that was the problem with Trump. Always dealing with the symptoms, never with the actual problem itself. Always mitigating the actual problem while dealing with the symptoms. I wish the GOP would do better. And it's amazing they're against helping out local and state government when that's what they're all about. What does the GOP even resent, represent anymore besides anti-Democrat? I don't know what it is anymore, because I know plenty of people who are, their first reaction is just like, as long as it's something the left doesn't like, I'm good with it. They don't actually care about states' rights anymore. They don't care about any of the things Republicans are supposed to represent anymore. And that's ridiculous. There's plenty of Republicans in there who care about this shit, but they're getting talked over by everyone else. Any senator, any House representative that is saying it's only 9% is someone you should not trust right now. Because they're towing the line and they're not telling the truth. And that is frustrating. That is absolutely frustrating. I like how the GOP acts like the, the left has all these conspiracy theory things they can do. Then how is the right ever in power? How is the right ever in power if the left has all these conspiracies? I don't get it. Why would you ever let the right do anything if you had all the power? It looks so dumb. What's the upper to this since it was so downer? Oh, we're getting stimulus checks probably, so... You know, it still depends on some things, but... uh, uh We're getting money. Huh? Huh? Money? Money's always good. Yeah, you can do that, you know? Oh yeah, GameStop went back up again. Jesus. Silly. It's a silly world. It's a silly world, and... We're trying to fight the shell game, and we'll see what happens in our lives, huh? I don't know where America will be in the next however many years. But I keep hoping it'll be better than what it's looking like. So there you go, that right there is the vlog. I, I had fun, I had fun watching, that's what's all about it. Having fun, thanks for coming by, and see you next time.